We're happy to be joined by Kevin Weeks, who works on the NHL Network's NHL Tonight. You can see that before and after every Stanley Cup playoff game. Kevin, it's Michael and Don. How are you doing? Fellas, what's going on? What's the word? Yeah, and my, Mike, I just want to, I just want huh? to interrupt for a second. My, uh, what do you got? Ke- M- Michael doesn't know you the way I know you. Michael, this guy is one of the best guys on television. Wow. He literally never sweats. He is. He was a tremendous player. He, you're going to enjoy the spot. Now, how, Can I sell it any better than that, Kevin? Then how do well, you well, not sweat, all, Kevin? Well, hold on, fellas. Fellas, hold on. First of all, thank you. So what's your preference? T-bone, ribeye, filet? <laughs> what do you, what, you guys let me know. Del Frisco's. Where do you guys Del want Frisco, Frisco's? New York Strip. That's, it. That's huh? me. We're going to go to Dell's. We're going to talk to my man Felix, the manager. We'll get all squared away there. Beautiful. We good? Are we good now? We're good. Yes. We're always good. Now we can talk <laughs> hockey. You guys, no, you guys know I'm big fans, man. I watch you guys all the time. Thank Listen you. To you guys watch you guys. So thank Thanks, you. Thanks, so man. Thank you, Kevin. Who has more pressure mm-hmm. tonight, the Islanders or Tampa Bay? I would say Tampa. I would say Tampa just because they're, you know, last year they go to Stanley Cup final. You look at the Lightning, what they've been able to accomplish. You look at the season that they've been able to accomplish, even in, in spite of some major injuries. Of course, they're dealing with the injury to their captain, Steven Stamkos, right now. Strawman on the back end. I spoke with one member of the Tampa staff today. He said Strawman skating. The deeper this series goes, the better the probability of Strawman being able to return. But, hey, this is a team that only came two goal, two games rather short of winning the Stanley Cup final last year against the Chicago Blackhawks. So if it's me, I say that the Lightning have more pressure. And speaking to some players on the Islanders, these guys are playing free. Nobody expected this from the Islanders. The Islanders are playing free. Overall, they're playing a good brand of hockey. And they, they like their team, as they should. They like their chances, as they should. I think Tampa's a stiff matchup. But there are a lot of things about the Islanders that I like so far. And another thing that we got to really factor into this, fellas, I like what the Islanders have been able to do in their first season at Barclays in Brooklyn. If you look at their regular season record, they played exceptionally well on home ice. So I think that bears well for them, certainly in this next two-game segment that they have coming up here. I guess my only concern, Kevin, is is that they won game one and the Lightning looked stale, right? Because they had a little bit of a long layover. Mm-hmm. And they got their legs late in the game and the Islanders held on. They lose 4-1 to one in game two. If you lose game three, I would start thinking in that room if I'm the Islanders that maybe we're just not good enough to be able to beat this team. We've now lost two in a row to them. We've, we've given back home ice advantage. So, Kevin, I, I think this is a huge game for the Islanders tonight to try to, to try to get back their bearings. I don't think this team can afford to lose two in a row. I think it's a big game for them. I agree with you. It's a huge game for the Islanders just based on confidence and based on the inexperience of their group and not having gone deep in a while and not winning a second, you know, winning a playoff round since 1993. And all that said, but we also got to remember there's a guy that's playing for the Islanders Number 91, JT. Yeah. John Tavares. I mean, he's played like a man to death. Regular season, first 60 games, ugh, he didn't look like the John Tavares I fully know. He's about 15 points off his pace. But I'll tell you what, once it came down the stretch, he started grabbing games by the throat. And he put his team on his back. He's doing squats with his teammates on his back. He's carried that team. So I, I think they're taking a lot of direction from him. He brings tons of leadership to the table. He's uber competitive. He's a top 10 player in the league right now. And when you have a game breaker like they do in John Tavares, that can go a long way. And not just from his ability to make plays and to manufacture offense, but also the leadership, especially in the locker room, in the event that they do go down 2 nothing in the first period. Or say they are down 3-1 in the second intermission. They've got a guy that not only has the game and the ability, but also that has that leadership and the respect and the command in the room to be able to pull the guys along with them. Now, Kevin, how much does confidence play a role? Because the fact that Tampa Bay has been there, done that, they had the T-shirt, as you mentioned, they were the Stanley Cup Finals. They won it to the Garden last year, won a Game 7 in the Eastern Conference Mm -hmm. Finals. So how much does that play a role in this series and and the rest of the way? It it definitely plays a role. I mean, just knowing the fact that they've been able to get there. And another thing, too, when you play in a Cup team or a team that gets to a Cup Final, I can tell you from experience, we did it in 0-2 with the Carolina Hurricanes. You have that inherent belief you're going to kill the penalty. That penalty is going to get killed. You're going to score on a power play. You don't score on a power play, you don't panic. They score on you on a penalty, you don't panic. No problem. Game's getting late, no problem. You just have this inherent belief that you're going to get it done. You're going to pull through. Somebody's going to deliver. I'm getting goosebumps talking about it. I can see Rob Brindamore right now in our locker room or Ron Francis. 
Somebody's going to be a hero in here tonight, boys. Who's it going to be? Who's going to be the hero? Who's got it on their stick? And, and quite oftentimes, it's somebody that's unheralded. So, I mean, you get so much experience and confidence to your question in going through that. You can't put a price on it. But at the end of the day, as you guys know, and we all know, all the NHL fans know, you've got to go out there and bring it every night. So it's nice to be able to lean on that history. It's nice to be able to lean on that experience. But ultimately, you still have to go and deliver. And that's what makes sports so great. And that's what makes playing in the NHL so great. You have to deliver. Yes, you can carry some things forward. And you can use those positive experiences. But ultimately, you've got to go out and get the job done. I'm talking to Kevin Weeks from the NHL Network. Ranger, or the Islanders are playing a little bit later on tonight. Game three against the Lightning. And I guess I had the Rangers on my mind, Kevin, because this question yeah. I think is going to be sensitive to you as a goaltender. Uh, All right? Murray. Bring it. To up two what? games to one against the Washington Capitals. He's a $642,000 cap hit. Okay? What? Elliot, $2.5 million cap hit. Grice oh, is a $1 million cap hit. Do I what? need to pay big money to goaltenders anymore? What? Really? So, I mean, uh, so I'm just wondering, do I need to pay? Like, like oh. Luongo is close to a $7 million cap hit. Lundquist what? is an $8.5 million cap hit. Do I need to pay big money to goaltenders anymore? Listen, fellas, here's the thing. Okay, let me break this down. There are only 60 NHL goalies in the world, 7 billion people. So guys will get their bread. Guys should earn their bread. The one thing I'm going to tell you, though, and I like this, the back end of your question, is the gap between your one and your two has narrowed. And it's tighter. That gap is narrower and tighter than it's ever been. And my point is there are a lot of guys that are so-called twos, there are a lot of guys that people try to basically take shots at. Oh, he's a backup. Oh, he's a backup. i got to tell you something. I'm telling you right now, there are a lot of guys that were twos. Look at Corey Schneider here in Jersey. I was telling people in Vancouver doing the games for Hockey Night in Canada and on the NHL Network, this guy's awesome. Yes, I know he plays behind Roberto Luongo. This guy's awesome. This guy's awesome. This guy's awesome. Look at how well he's played. And by the way, he stepped in for Marty Baudur. And they haven't missed the beat. And he hasn't missed the beat. Look at his look at his save percentage. <laughs> look at his numbers, his goals against. So, yes, and then speak about Matt Murray. I tweeted this out earlier today. Here's the thing about Matt Murray, right? So you get some people that are out there like, oh, we don't know about this Matt Murray guy. What? Matt Murray, last year, his first year in the American League in the minors, in the AHL and Wilkes-Barre, 40 games played, 1.58 goals against, 940 save percentage, 12 shutouts in 40 games. So right. if, you're, if you're looking at that and you're saying, hold on a second, really? Like, you're not really surprised by what this kid's doing. I've spoken to Sheldon Keith, that coach him in junior. I've, I've spoken to different people in the Pens organization. And this is a team that has Marc-Andre Fleury that's already won 350 NHL games, that could win 500 in his career, that's won a Stanley Cup and been to a Stanley Cup. And Marc-Andre Fleury is on the bench now healthy enough to back up as of last night saying, hey, man, I accept my role. Are you kidding me? So, yeah, you're absolutely right. You can get value. But I think one thing that happens with a lot of teams and a lot of people in the business, too, is a lot of people are blinded by perception. And I say it all the time. If you go on NHL.com and you take a look at our staff on there powered by SAP, there's no column that pees for perception. There's no perception column. So when you're looking at the metrics or you're looking at the intangibles when you're evaluating a player or a goalie specifically, you for me, my whole thing is on performance. And it's not about the perception. It's not about the whatever. Mano a mano, goalie to goalie, you know what's up. You know how you match up against the other guy. Like, look at Braden Holtby, guys. Braden Holtby's numbers are incredible. Braden Holtby tied Marty Brodeur this year for the most wins in a regular season in NHL history and we're on the verge of our centennial. <laughs> so... And Braden Holtby was all world, and I think he's going to win the Vezina Trophy as goalie of the year. But down the ice, there's this kid from Thunder Bay, Ontario, that's matching him save for save that nobody expected. So that's why I'm telling you, the gap between the ones and the twos has certainly narrowed. A lot of guys put in a lot of work in the offseason. Matt Murray works with his goalie coach, John Elkin, in the offseason. He's done that for the last three, four years, spending a lot of time working with him, and has paid a lot of dividends for him. Smart. Worked on his game, and here he is right now. It's an amazing story.